Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain. Day 115, as we roll through this crisis, the ups and downs, the sweat is running from my brow as it is extremely hot here in Madrid at the moment. And I suppose it's a similar situation around Spain, especially in the south, and hope you're getting through the hot weather okay. Big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there. Big thanks to all of the people that supported the channel through a small donation. Your names are here. Thanks to the people that bought merchandise. And a big thanks, as always, to my patrons on Patreon for supporting the channel to help me make these videos on a regular basis. Now, as usual, it's all about outbreaks here in Spain, and we're going to have a look at where the main outbreaks are. Of course, we know that in Catalonia, in the area of Lerida or Lleida, there is an outbreak, and there's also an active outbreak now in Galicia in the province of Lugo. Of course, I was in Lugo as recently as Saturday, but apparently the outbreak is in a province which is closer to the coast and not in the capital city or the mountains, which is where I spent most of my time in that region. So let's have a look here at what's going on. We can see here that the Yeda outbreak worsens and thousands of cases are expected. These are the 60 active COVID outbreaks here in Spain at the moment. And if we go to the map, we can see exactly where these outbreaks are at the moment. We can see that one there in Lugo that I was speaking about before, also in different areas there in Cantabria, the Bar country, of course the one in Lleida, other ones in Catalonia, Valencia, Murcia, the Balearic Islands are a bit of a worry if we remember that that was the first place to open again to international tourism. They have been hit by a few cases. Then all along the coast there, down through Andalucía, of course Madrid in the centre, Extremadura as we mentioned the other day, and the Canary Islands, of course. Now, of course, due to this new outbreak in Galicia, in the area of La Marina, they have been put into a confinement situation again. We can see here that the fear of being unemployed leaves reconfinement in the area in the background. The threat of losing their jobs for 534 workers at the Alcoa aluminium plant, which represents 30% of the GDP in the province, is more worrying than the prohibition to enter or leave 14 municipalities. And that's actually a good point, the health or the economy. We can see here a lot of people worried about losing their jobs, that financial security and job security more important than the health aspect. And as we know that after that three month lockdown, people worried about going into another lockdown and the terrible consequences that that will have on the population and on people's mental health and well-being. So fundamental to keep the health aspect under control in order to keep the economy moving slowly. Now I mentioned the other day that a lot of the outbreaks that we had in Spain are being blamed on people coming into the country. We can see here that since the borders were opened, 53 imported cases have arrived in Spain. And these obviously people that are coming here to work, temporary workers that are coming into the country to work on the harvests, and also people that have been able to come back into the country since the borders opened again, especially people coming in from countries from South America. There were cases from people coming from Bolivia, from Peru, from other South American countries, and it has been one of the main causes of recent outbreaks, according to authorities. Now, the government has also announced in recent days that they're going to extend the social shield, as they call it, to the most vulnerable members of society, people that have been hardest hit by this virus and its effect on the economy. We can see here that the government plans to extend it until September. There will also be a moratorium on mortgages and also basic supplies that they can't be cut off if people have trouble paying their bills, water, electricity, etc. And the government plans to give the green light this coming Tuesday to the extension until September the 30th of the guarantee of supply of electric energy, gas and water, according to sources of the executive, which thus extends initiatives launched as a social shield against the COVID-19 crisis. So good news there for people struggling at the moment to pay those bills, people worried about paying their mortgages, paying the gas bill, paying the electricity bill, with the government preparing to extend what they call the social shield. Now there's also talk about the furlough scheme being extended as well. The Labour Minister came out the other day and suggested that it could go through until December. We can see here that Yolanda Diaz vowed worst hit sectors will not be cut adrift. Now as I mentioned before, the weather here in Spain at the moment, extremely hot 
in most areas, and that led to various beaches around the country being closed early at the weekend. Beaches in the north of Spain, beaches in the south of Spain, a lot of beaches around the country were shut around lunchtime. And we can see here that several beaches were closed to ensure the safety distance is maintained. Access to the beaches of Chipiona, Barbate, Conil and Rota were closed. The city council of Barbate closed the access to the beach of Thaora at one o'clock because it had reached its capacity. So local councils here in Spain being very strict with beaches this year, trying to avoid some of the scenes that we have seen around the world in other places, especially in the UK, I think it was last week, when certain beaches there were absolutely packed with people. And here in Spain, obviously trying to avoid that by maintaining proper social distancing on the beach. And as we know, in Andalusia, we have those beach watch people, making sure that everything is under control. Now, yesterday they held a mass funeral for victims of this virus. We can see here that the king and queen, their daughters, and various political institutions attended the funeral for victims of COVID-19. However, Pedro Sánchez, the prime minister, and Pablo Iglesias, the vice prime minister, did not go to the mass for the victims. Spain is in the middle of an election campaign in various regions, especially in the north of Spain, and that's obviously the reason why the Prime Minister and the Deputy Prime Minister didn't attend. But of course, some sections of the media here are very critical that they weren't able to make it and not able to show their respect to people that lost their lives over the last few months. Now, a seroprevalence study was published yesterday, and it showed that very few people in Spain have antibodies against the coronavirus. We can see here that only 5.2% actually have antibodies. This is the third round of one of these studies and it left similar results to previous ones. So as we can see, herd immunity is still a long way off here in Spain. Now, another piece of news that caught my attention was a former UN expert decrying that Spain has an utterly inadequate social protection system. Philip Alston says the COVID-19 crisis has underlined the scale of challenge facing the country. The coronavirus pandemic has revealed the utterly inadequate state of Spain's social protection system, according to this expert, who is calling on the government to ensure its actions on basic rights live up to the rhetoric. Philip Alston, who was the UN Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty and Human Rights from 2014 to 2020, visited Spain at the end of January and witnessed what he termed truly outrageous conditions in some parts of of the country. The Spain report says the EU's fourth largest economy remains riven by deep widespread poverty and that its social assistance system is broken, underfunded, impossible to navigate and not reaching the people who need it the most. So time for politicians to stop with the rhetoric and fix a broken system. And it is one of the things that you hear a lot here in this country. Politicians are always talking about how fantastic the system is, how great the hospital system is, how great the social system is. But as we can see, the United Nations seriously criticizing it so time to spend money to fix the system, maybe cut back on the amount of politicians we have in this country, the amount of money that they spend on their fancy cars and all of the other perks that they have and start to fix the real problems and help the most vulnerable in this society. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from the last video. First one here from Ed Prohl. How are things in Barcelona? Yeah, thanks for the comment, Ed. To be honest, I don't know exactly how things are in Barcelona, but I'm sure that there are a few people in Barcelona watching these videos that can fill us in on the situation there. But I imagine that it's the same as here in Madrid, a big city. People are going about their day-to-day -to, -day to the best of their ability, wearing masks, of course, social distancing, all of those things, the new normal, as they call it here in Spain. I'm sure that in Barcelona, it's no different than other cities. And uh, from what I've seen around the place at the moment, people are doing their best to adhere to the rules. And I'm sure that one of the main differences in Barcelona at the moment is that there's not a lot of tourism going on. Barcelona is normally a city that is absolutely overrun by tourism this time of the year. And of course, that's disappeared. And of course, I'm sure that those numbers are very limited at the moment. So I imagine that's the state in Barcelona. But again, Again, if you're there in Barcelona, let us know. One here from Steve Stewart. Have I got reason to be worried about flying out to Spain August 2? Reason I ask is because the UK death rate is so low now and daily new cases are well under 500 now. 
but Spain and France are not showing latest total since July the 3rd. I am using Worldometer, which is a good reference point to view different countries, etc. Yeah, Steve, thanks for the comment. I wouldn't be worried about coming to Spain at the moment if I was you. Of course, when you come here, you're going to realize that Spain is not the same place as it was last year. Reduced amounts of people everywhere. More difficult to go to bars and restaurants and get out and about and people wearing masks almost everywhere you go. There are outbreaks, as we have seen around different parts of the country. But of course, if you're going to come to Spain, get a bit of sun on your body, get a bit of fresh air. There's really no problem with that. As you saw last week, I was out and about traveling because I think that it's something that we need to do. We need to get out and about and spend money. The health problem is there. It's out there. It's going to be here for the next 12 months, 18 months. I don't know. But we can't spend our lives living in fear locked up. I think we just have to try and get on with it to the best of our ability. One here from Paul just recently came across your channel. Due to travel out of Alaurin El Grande on the 23rd of July as part of a group of 10 staying in a villa. Interested to hear what people think about traveling to local bars, beaches, etc. We've had mixed messages about the beaches in Spain here in the UK lately. Yeah, Paul, thanks for the comment. I mentioned earlier that beaches are struggling a little bit with the numbers this year. Obviously, a lot of people trying to get to the beach. And of course, some have been closed at lunchtime, as we saw in Cadiz, and I think in the Basque Country as well, and other places around Spain. Uh, we also mentioned that bars and restaurants are working, but with a lot of strict controls, reduced amounts of people being allowed in. But I wouldn't have a problem going to a beach in Spain at the moment. Just remember that you're going to have to maintain those social distancing rules. Maybe you're going to have to download an app keep up to date on what's happening at the beaches, but you should be able to have a decent holiday in Malaga when you come. One here from David, when I came to Madrid 10 years ago, I certainly figured out that without tourism, Spain would be in trouble. Today, this is coming to reality and that sector will suffer, which will tank the Spanish economy. For the past few days, I have not seen any tourists in Madrid. Yeah, thanks for the comment, David. As I said the other day, there is a perfect storm against Spain at the moment. Tourism, foreign investment, trade, those three things that have been hardest hit by this virus outbreak and Spain is in the middle of that perfect storm at the moment. Unfortunately, you are right, there are virtually no tourists in the center of Madrid at the moment and I think that's also the case in Barcelona as well. Normally there would be thousands and thousands of people in the Plaza Mayor, in the Mercado de San Miguel, all of those typical tourist areas there, the Puerta del Sol, Retiro Park, Again, very, very few people. The locals are having a field day at the moment, being able to go to places that we would never be able to go to normally because they would be packed out with tourists. And you're right, the Spanish economy is too dependent on these things, but who knew we were going to get a crisis of this magnitude? One here from Mark. Hi, Stuart. I'm a resident of Lleida. While there has been a rise in the number of cases here, I'm not convinced it is due to just fruit pickers. There may be an element of blame the immigrants going on here. I also think the reaction is extreme. Kim Torra is flexing his political muscle after months of being governed by Madrid. Yeah, there is a soft target. He wouldn't have the Ganas to close Barcelona or other places on the coast. Yeah, thanks for the comment, Mark, and good point. I understand that Mr. Torra is flexing his political muscle since he had it taken away from him for about three months there when the Spanish government took control of the whole country. I'm pretty sure he wasn't happy about that. And you're right, I get the feeling that there is a blame the immigrants campaign going on at the moment. I saw on the news yesterday the security guards beating up an African guy because he didn't have his mask on properly. And of course, images like that help to reinforce the blame the immigrants theory that you spoke about here. And people that I speak to are talking about that, that the cases are imported, that they've come from outside the country, that they're immigrants. And you're right, the reaction does seem to be extreme. One here from Ray Zanette. Thanks for your reporting, Stuart. As you probably know already, the Comarca of La Marina and Lugo has been locked down again following on the heels of the Yeda lockdown. Will some portion of Madrid be the third to lock down yet again? Yeah, thanks for the comment. Haven't heard about any areas of Madrid being locked down. Apparently, there's only a small outbreak here at the moment. The main outbreaks are, as you said, in places in the north of Spain, Yeda, and also in Lugo there, and other places around the country as well as we saw on the map. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised. That's what the government's going to do. If there is a problem in a particular area, they're going to shut it down, whether it's a county, whether it's a region, whether it's a city, whether it's a town, 
that's what they're going to do. But fingers crossed that won't happen to my particular area here. One here from Lisa. Are there internal border restrictions between provinces? Yeah, Lisa, thanks for the comment. As far as I know, there are no restrictions between provinces. You can travel freely between the regions here in Spain at the moment. However, if you are in Lleida or Lera the city, or if you are in that area in Galicia that has a confinement restriction at the moment, obviously you can't travel in or out of that area. But the Lugo province, there's no problem. You can go from Lugo to Orense. You can go from Lugo to Castilla Leon. You can go from Castilla Leon to Madrid. You can go from from Madrid to Valencia. There's no problems traveling around those areas, but you have to try to avoid those lockdown areas. Those are the only restrictions at the moment, as far as I know. And finally, one here from Peter. Never mind the virus. Is Spain still selling that shitty bacon? Yeah, thanks for the comment. It's always surprised me how bad the quality of bacon is in this country. I actually, I know English people that bring their own bacon down here with them when they travel because they can't find a decent rasher in this country. Surprising considering Spain's love of pork that they can't get a decent cut of bacon, but it does all come down to the cut. Spanish bacon here is normally very fatty. There's not much of a meaty part on it and uh, Spanish people are not really big bacon eaters or at least the people I know here in Spain don't eat a lot of bacon and that's probably the reason why you don't get a good cut of bacon in this country. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. See you in the next one. Hasta luego.